just in time. New suit? Plain white thing not flashy enough for you? Yeah, the tailor said it wasn't iconic enough. Apparently everyone's running around with a big letter on their chest these days. Now look at how well those guys get along. Surely nothing bad will happen between them in the future. For those who may not know, Invincible recently announced its second season along with the release of an exclusive prequel episode focusing on Adam Eve. There's actually quite a lot to talk about in this special and I even have a script for it prepared on the side. But there was one particular element of the episode that had so much to talk about that I decided to just give it its own separate video. And I think you all know what it is, but perhaps it would help if I gave some context. At the start of the series, a super-powered alien named Nolan is on Earth, protecting its citizens along with a superhero group called the Guardians of the Globe. In the meantime, he's raising a loving family, his wife Debbie Grayson and his son Mark, who starts to awaken his powers while attending high school. Nolan gets into the act of training Mark and helping him understand the root of his powers to become a superhero himself. Everything is fine in Nolan's life, until one day he randomly decides to brutally murder the Guardians of the Globe. It's not until the final episode of the season that Nolan reveals that he was sent to Earth as part of a mission to conquer it for the Viltrum Empire, as he gets into a final battle with his son Mark to determine what will happen to the Earth and its people. But just as it seems Nolan is about to defeat him, Mark taps into Nolan's humanity. In spite of being overpowered, he still stands up to his father because his faith in humanity and love for his family keeps his determination strong causing Nolan to stop fighting and think back to the years he spent with his human family. He takes a moment to reflect on his actions before leaving Earth, abandoning his post, but not before shedding a single tear, implying the guilt he feels for the pressure and suffering he afflicted on his son. Nolan's character arc and development throughout Season 1 is one of the most, if not the most, acclaimed element of the show. It's a solid story about a hardened warrior finding his humanity, an alien sent to conquer a foreign world but finding value in the lives of lesser life forms, and learning to love his family and how it's more important to him than his duties as a soldier. The inner conflict he goes through, trying to fulfill his duty but processing his love for his family while feeling guilt over carrying out actions that end up hurting himself and his loved ones, is an incredible piece of storytelling with good pacing and build-up throughout leading to a satisfying climax. It's a perfectly executed airtight story without a single second of wasted screen time as the writers allow us to understand and empathize with his situation, and feel engulfed in his struggle. I made a video delving into this before, so it's difficult for me to talk about without repeating myself. It makes Nolan without question the best character in the series because his storyline is the most legitimate with the most weight behind it, and his relationship with Debbie and Mark is given very compelling drama to add to the plot. It manages to be very nuanced without taking away from the other storylines throughout the season, having just the right amount of breathing room to make it satisfying to see unfold. So understandably, Season 2 has a lot of expectations to live up to, as many viewers are anticipating the faithful continuation of his story. The writing staff would certainly have to pull off something miraculous to reassure us that Nolan's arc is in good hands. But what if I told you they managed to succeed in doing that before Season 2 even comes out, with a single end credit scene that changes everything? And this is where the Adam Eve special comes in. Cutting away from Eve's story, we're taken to the Grayson home where Nolan returns after a long day of hero work. Mark comes downstairs covered in duct tape, claiming that to compensate for his lack of powers he can be duct tape man, wrapping Nolan's enemies in duct tape. They joke for a while as Nolan comments on the possibility that Mark may not get his powers, though Debbie reassures him that even if Mark doesn't become a Viltrumite, they'll love him all the same. But as Debbie walks away to help unwrap Mark's duct tape, this happens. This moment is precisely 18 seconds long, but it manages to be one of the top 5 best scenes in the entire show. 18 seconds may not seem like a lot, but in this small span of time it manages to convey so much of Nolan's character and what he struggles with. Given Mark's height and difference in appearance compared to other flashbacks, we know for certain this takes after the baseball scene where Debbie teaches Nolan how to appreciate the simpler things in life with his family. At this point, Nolan is beginning to believe more and more in the facade he made by posing as a heroic alien who came to Earth to settle down. It's less of a cover and more something that he truly values and doesn't want to risk losing, and it greatly foreshadows the eventual outcome of his character arc in the original first season, how he struggles between his love for his family and his loyalty to Viltrum, and how he desperately tries to convince himself that what he's doing is for the greater good only to ultimately confront the reality of what he's become as a result of his son's last words to him. He grew to care for his family, to value humanity, 
to believe in his son for who he is instead of just grooming him to be a soldier. But it's important to note that at this point, his Viltrumite tendencies are still very present in his mind. So the inner struggle Nolan is having here is a lot more visibly ferocious. Nolan is thinking to himself that it's pointless to keep up this facade if there's nothing to gain from it. Mark may not get his power so he won't be able to train him to be a Viltrumite soldier. Everything he's doing here is a waste of time so he's better off disposing Debbie and Mark and starting over. After all... What's 17 more years? I can always start again. Make another kid. But right as he's about to act on those thoughts, something stops him from doing it. He begins to realize the implications of what he's considering, and how it would affect him if he went forward with it. He slowly calms himself down, and buries his face in his hand in shame. He was pretty much like, keeping up this family man facade is completely pointless. I should just dispose of them now and start conquering Earth just before his humanity snaps him out of it. And when he does snap out of it, he feels so much guilt and shame. The fact that he came so close to doing it too actually makes this scene really haunting and foreboding. Nolan is still struggling to overcome the toxic influence of Viltrum culture to the point he nearly surrenders to that impulse. His reactions in this scene are really disturbing. Mark is just acting like a normal kid, doing dumb normal kid stuff. The appropriate reaction is something like Debbie's. But Nolan's ideology has such an absolutist outlook that anything other than perfect strength from his son is a cause for anger. It runs so deep that Mark's just acting like a kid really upsets him. It's so far removed from an appropriate reaction that it's scary. Debbie will love him all the same with or without his powers. But for Nolan, it changes everything. It happens so quickly that it's frightening seeing how instant that Viltrum on an off switch in his head is supposed to be. He was actually going to kill his family right then and there. Seeing those expressions is enough to sell me that he's terrifying. It's a really chilling sequence that reinstates how intimidating and monstrous Nolan is supposed to be, and the sinister intentions lying beneath the surface. You can actually imagine how frightening it would be to be Debbie and Mark, considering that Nolan always had the thought of killing them in the back of his mind. He literally views his family as a failed experiment which is really awful to think about, and it gets even worse when you learn more about what Viltrumites are actually like. Viltrumites value strength and power over everything else. They go out of their way to kill those they consider weak because they view it as an insult. Even when a Viltrumite kills another Viltrumite, the killer is congratulated for ridding the Empire of that weakness. With all this in mind and knowing how close Nolan was to slaughtering his family, it actually comes across as more alarming than any of the gore and bloody violence in the show so far. And remember how long a Viltrumite's lifespan is supposed to be. They can live up to thousands of years. Nolan spent thousands of years being raised by a warmongering culture, so it would have been really easy for him to do what any other Viltrumite would have acted on. But just as his anger starts reaching a breaking point, he stops. He pauses, and takes a moment to collect himself. He starts thinking more rationally and begins to actually think about the implications behind what would happen if he killed Mark and Debbie. And after realizing how horrible it was for him to consider doing it, he feels ashamed and disgusted with himself. Nolan wants to be the ruthless monster he was raised and trained to be. It would have been so much simpler for him to do that. But Earth has put emotions on him he never had to deal with before. He loves his family, and he's come to value the idea of being a hero, respected and admired rather than feared. He values the friendships he made with the Guardians of the Globe, and he values his life as a family man raising Mark to be a good person and cherishing Debbie for being a supportive wife and mother. And because of how quickly he shifts through these emotions, it makes the moment much more genuine. He feels sadness and regret as quickly as he feels anger, but he holds on to the regret even longer. Nolan went from terrifying to sad in an instant and he continues to struggle with that inner conflict. It actually shows how much he's changed since coming to Earth in spite of still wrestling with that mindset. He had so many opportunities to just start taking over the Earth, but being a beloved father was trumping every conviction he had. There's so much storytelling behind these facial expressions alone. Happiness, aggressive intent, confusion, and regret. All in 18 seconds. Wrath because his son won't get his powers, guilt because he's thinking of hurting people he loves, and shame because he doesn't know how this is going to work out. He's realizing how much he cares about more than just his mission and is now afraid of what will happen if the Empire starts pressuring him to take over the Earth. As a matter of fact, this feeds into another incredible thing about this ending from the special. It strengthens the weight of scenes from the original first season. There's one particular moment I feel like I forgot to talk about in my original review. It's the dinner scene where Mark reveals he got his powers. After Mark reveals he got his powers, Nolan shows a very concerned and troubled look on his face. It's not until Debbie nudges him that he starts congratulating him. It's one of those things you don't really think about when you're first watching the show. But after seeing it a second time with context from future episodes, it suddenly hits a lot harder. Nolan is not happy to hear about Mark getting his powers because he knows what it means for him. 
When he asks him are you sure, he's saying it like he's hoping he just imagined it, because at this point he made up his mind to just wait it out for the rest of their lives. Let his wife and son grow old and pass away so they don't have to deal with the Viltermite takeover. It wasn't until Mark got his powers that he decided to take action. It's like he was looking for an excuse to stall his mission because he loved his family too much. The way he asked Mark if he's sure is meant for both Mark and himself. He's reminded of what he was tasked to do on Earth and questions if he should go through with it. He was evidently devastated when Mark got his powers. He resigned himself to enjoying just being a family man and maybe he could try again later. But once Mark got his powers, it meant his time was up, and he had to do his duty as a Viltrumite to get the planet ready. In Nolan's mind, Mark getting his powers meant murdering his friends and abandoning his family to do his job. Basically, Nolan only made the decision to kill the Guardians of the Globe after Mark got his powers. It makes their deaths more tragic because for all we know, Nolan wasn't even planning on killing them. He just wanted it over with as fast as possible because of how much it hurt that he had to resort to it due to his mission. It really solidifies how strong his connection with Mark is as the decision he made would be based on whether or not he got his powers. It even improves the 500 year scene because it adds to how deeply Nolan was lying to himself about his duty. The dude is over a thousand years old. 17 years may as well have just been a month for him. But during those 17 minuscule years, he learned to have compassion for the citizens of Earth as well as his family. Over a thousand years of Viltrumite brainwashing and propaganda that was fed to him came crashing down once he fought Mark. Because the love he grew to have for his family and his image as a superhero were that genuine and powerful. He was really struggling with his Viltrumite teachings until his son got through to him, leading him to feel ashamed of what he ultimately became. Nolan really wanted to believe that he could get over those feelings and conquer the Earth for his empire, but this scene just proves that he's becoming human. In spite of how hard he was trying to deny it, he was truly happy on Earth. He found love, he started a family, he made friends, and he learned to value the little things in life that make it worth living. And that's what makes this 18 seconds of animation so compelling. This is the second time in which they've done an amazing job showing Nolan's struggle with his family and his responsibilities as a Viltrumite. He was going to kill him right then and there, but then he realizes he loves them too much to do it. Then he feels ashamed of himself for even thinking of doing such a thing. That's a face we never see again until he leaves after beating Mark. It shows him restraining his Viltrumite rage and feeling remorse for the lengths he went through to lie to himself and others. He goes through a whole gamut of emotions in a short amount of time which helps to demonstrate how hard he's dealing with these conflicting emotions. Another thing that helps demonstrate this is actually the background music. It does an amazing job demonstrating how Nolan is feeling, especially since there's no dialogue during this sequence. It starts off low and ominous as you can feel the pent up anger he has due to Mark not having his powers, and as the music builds up he takes a step forward like he's going to do something horrible, and as he begins to regret thinking about what he was considering, it turns into something more soothing. Without uttering a single word, Nolan manages to tell the audience so much with just the range of his expressions. In a way, Nolan didn't want to conquer Earth anymore because of humanity's effect on him, but what he wants doesn't matter to the Viltrum Empire. So now he's stuck in a truly impossible situation, choosing between loving his family and fulfilling his duty. He settled on Earth, married, had a child, and got to live through his best moments as a dad. It softened him and his heart, and you can really see a struggle between duty and being a family man. Maybe he was thinking about conquering Earth after Debbie and Mark died of old age. He was fully content with living a peaceful life with them, waiting until after everyone he loved passed away. He didn't want to put them through the conquering of Earth because he cared about them too much for that. Not only does this show how much he cares about Mark, but it also shows how much he cares about Debbie. Nolan could have easily just killed her when Mark was a baby and raised him on his own, molding him more to his liking. But he didn't. He chose to stay with her. He chose to live that life. So he does truly love her instead of just thinking of her as a pet or breeding for offspring. He doesn't feel as angry or frustrated as he normally would, if even at all. It's not real anymore, but something else is. He wants to ask himself what he's doing, but he can't even finish the sentence in his head. Whether he acknowledges it or not, Nolan is truly proud of the life he's leading on Earth. Even though it was built on a lie, he comes to believe it in himself, making it no longer a lie, but a cold truth. I would even go so far as to say it's a massive improvement over the comics. From what I've seen, the comic version of Nolan doesn't show him visually struggling with his humanity up to the present day, but the animated show does show that side of him. Not only is it faithful to the source material, but it builds upon it to tell an even better version of the story. It's this inner conflict that makes Nolan an incredibly compelling character. It's both sad and wholesome seeing him being a father due to the tragedy of the full context, beginning to be conflicted and choosing his life on Earth or his mission. This goes to show that with animation you can get a lot shown without dialogue. I really love how the animators were able to capture how much he's forcing himself to hold back that rage, and how he was able to stop himself and show compassion. As I said before, this moment is only 18 seconds long, and yet it manages to be one of the most powerful scenes in the show so far. 
The amount of emotion it gets across in that small span of time is so intense and raw that it puts 95% of animated shows today to complete shame. I can definitely say with full certainty that they're really doing well and staying true to the comics, as Nolan continues to be the peak of Invincible story. This post credit scene was something that could have easily been cut from the Adam Eve special, but they left it in, and in doing so they strengthened Nolan's character even further. Seeing him go through all those emotions, the look of anger towards his weak family and the disgust he felt for what he was thinking of doing, all within a few seconds is top tier writing, which is nothing short of what you should expect from Invincible. But what about the rest of the episode? How does the Adam Eve special as a whole stand out compared to the end credit scene? Well, that's a video for next time. For now, let's leave off in saying that if the writers can pull something like this off in a small amount of time, then season 2 of Invincible is in good hands. Thanks for checking out my review. If you liked what you saw here and would like to support me, check out my Patreon in the description. Every little bit helps and I always appreciate those who support my work. Until next time, stay cool.